people are tired. Tired of being complimented on how well we speak English, even though a lot of us have been here all our lives. Tired of being asked, no, but where are you actually from? And then repeating the question because giving an answer such as I'm from Mayo or I'm from Limerick or I'm from Dublin is just not an acceptable enough answer for you. When I played sports, when I win the words, I'm Irish. My parents are questioned. My brother stopped on the street for being black. Oh, I'm African. I'm Congolese. I'm not Irish anymore. I'm only Irish for the benefit. matter is not just an American issue. Black Lives Matter is happening right now. Black people all around the world are standing up and saying enough is enough when it comes to racism. Racism is an evil disease in Ireland. We must speak up and vow to never remain silent when it comes to the issue of racism. Black Lives Matter today, tomorrow and every other day. For many of us, primary school is a pleasant experience. As we are taking our first steps into the educational world, imagine this experience being stunted and replaced by racism. I was the only black person in my class and me and my sister were the only black people in my primary school the entire time that we were in primary school. And in, I remember in junior infants, um, a boy in my class, he told me that the reason my skin was so dark was because my mum left me outside in, in the sun to burn because she didn't love me. And um, I went home crying because I was very upset. I thought it was ugly. I thought it was disgusting. And so my mum went to go speak to the principal the next day and said, you know, this can't continue. And the principal said, kids will be kids and that it is not their responsibility to educate children on race. Um, you know, we move on, um, but I had an ongoing thing with this boy in which he was always making off comments about me being black. And then in fourth class, um, I remember he was the first person to ever call me a nigger and, um, I felt helpless. It reminded me of being that four year old girl back in junior infants again. and. It is something that has always stuck with me. It is a memory that I think about like literally so often that I can tell you exactly what I was wearing, exactly where I was, exactly who I was with. Um, and yeah, that is the, my first ever experiences of racism were in primary school. I remember in first class, this girl used to bully me all the time. One time she had cornered me by um, the bathroom and then she was proper like basically just being racist. She was talking from the color of my skin, how my skin was ugly, not beautiful. She even asked how do I have friends looking the way I look. I just moved to Ireland in 2010. I started primary school in Limerick and I just wanted to play with people and they wouldn't want to play with me. They said my hair was dirty and that I smelled. And when we were walking home from school, they were making monkey noises and they called my older brother a nigger. I used to be really good friends with a girl when I was growing up through primary school when I first moved here. And we were friends all throughout primary school and then we went to secondary school and people started treating me a certain way and after a while she would like start hanging out with me less and she didn't really want to be seen with me and then she wouldn't start speaking to me so obviously I asked her one day and I was like what has changed and she was like I don't want to be friends with you because it's embarrassing because like nobody likes you because you're black. In 2010, the Teachers Union of Ireland conducted a survey and the results showed 46% of respondents reported racist incidents in their schools. 
there needs to be a clear distinction between bullying and racism in secondary schools. So many racist incidents have been brushed aside as bullying while in fact it was social racism. Secondary school wasn't the best for me growing up. I actually changed schools in first years and told my mom that it was for the better facilities in the other school, a complete lie. I was physically bullied by this one girl in the school and mentally bullied by a group of popular girls in the school as well. That girl would pull my braids as I walked by. She'd make fun of my black features like my nose and my lips as well. She'd throw things at me and a few times pulling the chair out from under me when I tried to sit down. But I remember knowing that I was going to leave that school. And I remember in the final exams, I wrote her a letter, very mature for a 12 year old, saying and asking what exactly I did to her for her to do all this to me. Not knowing that it was racism itself, but just thinking it was all my fault. My experience with racism happened when I was in secondary school. Uh, there were kids that would come up to me and call me dirty monkey. You should go wash yourself, you smell. And from there it progressed onwards. So I just started isolating myself. And from there, when I'd go into class and we didn't have assigned seats, people just wouldn't want to sit beside me. Um, people wouldn't want to pick me for teams and people wouldn't want to invite me to their birthday party. Like there was one year I was in junior cert and there was this girl, I thought we were friends, but she invited everyone else in the year except me. And it just goes to show that like all those really nuanced ways to exclude people really, really hurt people's feelings. First or so week of school, we were in religion class talking about immigrants, how and why people might come to this and other countries. I remember specifically because I was in the back talking to a new friend I made that day. I didn't input much in the class and stayed quiet and out of nowhere, I was asked if I was a refugee. I remember how quiet the classroom went, how everyone stared, how my heart pounded in my chest as I managed to gasp out the words that I was Irish, just like the rest of the people here. I think a lot of us right now are thinking about, you know, the racism we face as black individuals in Ireland. You know, racism is real. It does exist, especially in Ireland. Um, whether it's, you know, the sly comments or, you know, the microaggressions. Um, I can remember as early on as maybe seven or eight years old, walking home from, walking out of school, and a bunch of random lads came up behind me and put a bag over my head and called me the N-word. Or the multiple occasions where, um, whether it's the lady behind the counter in the post office or teachers or just random people telling me oh you know you speak good good English even though English is my first language or for my science teacher who took one of my braids and while holding a Bunsen burner asking what would happen if I set one of these on fire and even for my English secondary school teacher who called upon me to read out a poem by a Jamaican poet because she thought I would have a good Jamaican accent you know, I think people really need to check themselves and their ignorance right now because racism is not acceptable. There was a group of people I called friends at the time and one in particular would repeatedly show me racist memes that she would get from her uncle. On a separate occasion, we were in her car and we were having a conversation. I can't remember what it was about, but somehow led her to say, I would never say N-word E-R, but I would say, and she then proceeded to say the less offensive version of you know what. Not to mention, when she got a call from her, that same uncle a few days later, he greeted me with, hey blacking, this isn't even scraping the surface of the amount of racism I have experienced since I was born in Ireland almost 20 years ago. Growing up in a predominantly white rural Irish town as a minority, of course, I've experienced the racism that exists subtly on the surface of our society. I remember my dad running for town council and having his posters all over the town. I remember looking up to my dad and really thinking, wow, he's really stepping out of 
what's the norm in a small rural Irish town. Driving to school the next day to see my dad's posters defaced with racial slurs written all over them and having to take them down. Seeing that was very hard and it made me realise how the racism that exists in Ireland, it's subtle but very, very there. When I was about 15 years old, I was after coming from the library uh, studying and I was at the bus stop waiting for the bus to head home. And it was a couple of kids actually. Um, they were between the ages of eight and 10 and they actually called me the N-word. Now I am of South African origin and the N-word isn't used there. We have a different racial uh, slur. Did these kids even understand what they were saying and what this word actually meant? And on that day, I brushed it off. College is supposed to be a place of learning. There is no excuse to why people should still harbor racist thoughts. The notion that kids will be kids was debunked after secondary school. There should be no excuse for racism in a third level institution. Growing up in Ireland, I have experienced a myriad of racism, whether it is like on my walk home when, and getting called the N-word, or else if I was to pick out one instance that stands out the most, it would have to be in my final year of college where I lived in a house, uh, an all-girls house, where it was just one series after series after series of microaggressive racism. And like the, it, like one thing that would stand out to me the most is when I had a friend over who happened to be black and the girls uh, made sure that they took out all of the electronics in the house all around their rooms just in case that my friend robbed them and they wouldn't let me know that issue. They just had to let my other housemate who happened to be white to say that, oh, this person can't stay over because we don't know him, even though within the house, like we've always had like friends come in and out. But like this was the first instance where it was like the first black person outside of me in the house and they felt like a certain, a sudden threat within the household. And the fact that they didn't come to me and say to me, they knew that that was wrong. So they had to go around to my other housemate in order to kind of diffuse the situation. And I did report the situation but there was nothing said for it because all they cared about was just the fact that, oh no, like what would other people think if you say that we were racist instead of being like, okay, we've been racist to you, how can we help? I was taking a walk um, by the river bank behind UL the other day and these young lads were walking towards me and they could see that I was coming, but clearly none of them were gonna kind of move away from the road. And then this one time, this guy stared me straight in the eye and spat on the floor. I didn't think he meant anything until another friend of mine mentioned that it happened to her as well. And it kind of makes you feel dirty after because you don't even realize it until it happens. And you're like, why do I feel so bad about this? It's almost like they look at you in disgust and spit in the floor trying to make it look like you irritate them. And that is such a terrible thing. So a few years ago, I was in Eddie, Eddie Rocket in Dublin, trying to get seats, so I was queuing. Um, I was waiting there for at least 10-15 minutes, uh, waiting for my boyfriend. I would try to catch the attention of the uh, people who were walking there, but no one came to me. Um, they were trying to start serving people who came after me. I was like really shocked and upset. Uh, when my boyfriend came, then... Uh, who's white they just run to him and start uh, asking uh, for, for many people where you want to see it and I was really upset because I was like oh I was there for 10-15 minutes waiting to get a seat and no one noticed me my experience with racism was the first time um, I was coming down from the library I was coming back from the library with a friend of mine, two black guys. We were walking down, um, yeah, just going home. And we met a Chinese child and mother coming towards us. And um, the child turned and said, black monkeys. Um, it took me off. I didn't really, I thought he was joking, but my other friend took it very serious. I was like, um, he responded back and said, 
something is wrong with you or something then the mom was very apologetic she came back she was like oh we're sorry this he's sorry he didn't mean it he didn't. she felt very embarrassed and um what got through what was in my mind was like and um, where did this child learn it from because normally he wouldn't say a child wasn't born this way so it's either from school or from the parents In 2019, INAR's report showed that 37 racist incidents that were reported came from the workplace. If I am qualified in my job, why does it matter what my last name is? Why can't I get an equal opportunity? The beauty industry, the modeling industry in Ireland needs a lot of work. In many cases, I found myself having to do my own hair and makeup before shows. Um, because it just makeup artists refusing to expand their experience with darker skinned women. They just refuse to learn how to um, deal with afros and kinky, even wavy textures. Their go-to styles will always be straightening their hair. There was actually one incident in particular when I did the Rosa Trilly fashion show with my agency. Um, I came to the show with my hair chemically straightened to make it a, like, a little bit easy for the hairstylist to try at least to recreate the styles that they're doing on the white models on mine. But even that in itself, my hair being chemically straightened, straightened to the point like of, you know, um, damage, that still was not enough that I had to just go back to my traditional style of slicking my hair back. And obviously I, I didn't come prepared and I didn't bring my own hair products and they obviously didn't have my hair products so they used wax. And just the texture of my hair, they were trying to hold it down, it just didn't work. Just in it, that as well, it's just the lack of um, even just hair products and beauty products. It's just drove me insane. In the professional field, while trying to apply for jobs, I found that when I wrote my actual name on my CV, nobody wanted to hire me even though I have a good CV and I have experience. And when I changed it to a more Irish sounding name, I got calls from every company that I applied for. I was called for an interview in a small retail store. When I arrived at the store, I could tell that the store owner and the manager were not pleased to see me and um, when they called me the very first thing they asked me was if I was Irish because my name was very strange and I said yes that I am Irish um, and they persisted to ask more questions. They asked about how long I've been in the country, they asked if I'm illegal in Ireland, they asked me how I've made money in the past, how I afford to go to college, how I pay for college, how I have been surviving unemployed for the past couple of months. They asked me if my family sit at home and live off government benefits and things like that. And then they proceeded to ask me the professions of each and every one of my family members. I was not asked a single interview question in this interview and I left there feeling confused and violated. Racism is something that is passed down from generation to generation. If we do not speak up, the next generation will suffer. My mum told me that when I was about five or six that she watched me try and scrub the brown from my skin and cry because it wouldn't come off. You know, years later then, I now have to endure hearing my five-year-old son telling me that he wished that he had skin like his dad and that he wants to be white like everybody else. You know, that, that just kills me. And as much as I try to lift him up and, um, you know, try and help him to feel black and proud, his peers, the media and day-to-day -day life, they have more influence than anything. There's no reason why a child should feel badly about their skin colour and that's something that comes from the top down, you know, through parents and families, friends. You know, racism is a taught thing. Racism leaves irreversible wounds. You may refuse to see them, but they're always there, slowly chipping away at us. We try so hard to forget these painful memories. 
So I've been living in Ireland for most of my life. We moved here when I was about five and I'm 24 this year. And I would say for most of my life living in Ireland, I've definitely had experiences with racism from a young age up until now, really. So when I was younger, a lot of it would have been, you know, name calling, saying stuff like I look like a monkey or oh you were adopted because I'm mixed race and my mom um, and my sister are white so I was the only kind of mixed race child so it was definitely a case of you know being told that you were adopted or you came in from back of a truck or back of a food truck you you know you snuck into the country that kind of thing I was out in um, uh, Dolan's bar and this guy behind me just pulled my hair and and I turned around and I go to him why what the hell like why did you do that there was no need and he he kind of started laughing he's like oh my god I'm so sorry I thought you were wearing a wig and like I just kind of thought that would have been so it's even worse that he thought it was a wig because clearly his intention was to humiliate me by pulling off my wig this is an interesting topic to speak on because these aren't any memories I'd actively hold on to. So when I was asked to do this, I kind of had to sift through my mind and recall some pretty painful memories, to be honest. I remember growing up in Cork and just like, I don't want to say daily basis, but on a regular enough basis, it was something I experienced. Just things like walking through my stay with my friend who's also black. I remember there'd be these kids that would usually be outside their house playing as kids do. And literally whenever we'd walk past, they would shout racial slurs at us and they're calling us these names that they probably don't really understand the meaning of or the power and hate behind those words that they used, but they just did it so regularly and casually. And that's part of the problem. I mean, kids don't develop these ideas or come to these biased conclusions on a human eye on their own. They're taught to them by who? By their parents, by society. Honestly, I feel like that in itself is a testament to the importance of education. Because honestly, racism is ignorance. And Martin Luther King Jr. himself said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and think critically. Intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. Intelligence plus character. And people with biased views or ideas are just lacking in both. As you can see, racism is something that is experienced from as early as primary school. This is not to labor Ireland as a racist country, but to merely highlight the instances that have occurred in our homeland. In future, if you see racism, call it out. By remaining silent, you are being complacent in our suffering. My skin color should not be used as a weapon against me. I should be able to live my life to its fullest without fear of being judged or discriminated. We are all human beings and we all deserve to be treated equally. Ireland is our home, and it's time to fully acknowledge how we're becoming more multicultural and diverse. and a hero and I am one of the co-founders for our project on silencing black voices. I got involved in the project as I thought that it was about time that I started talking about my own experience of racism within the Irish community but I also wanted to provide a platform for other black voices within the Irish community to talk about their experience of race. I hope that our project will provide a platform where their voices can feel heard and finally acknowledged in order to create a safe space to discuss this issue of race. I have found that Working on this project, I have found my voice and I vow to never be silent when it comes to the issue of racism ever again. Hi, my name is Catherine Oshikoya and I am one of the co-founders for this project on silencing black voices. I got involved in this project in the current light of everything that's happening in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. I thought it was important to highlight the fact that racism is a pressing issue in Ireland, even though it is not as blatantly obvious as it is over in the States. 
This project aim is to help raise the voices that have been silently suffering under the cusp of racism for so long and for them to freely express the encounters that they've had in Ireland. I hope moving forward that we all treat each other equally as human beings as the world is meant to be. Thank you.